good morning. Okay, so we got the uh, last bucket of pay dirt. I've added some water in there just to get some of the metals to the bottom. Um, I just panned out the very first pan. And what I'm seeing in it, I'll get it over here in the light so it's a little easier for you to see. I tap the metals and they come up here. And in there, there's all those silvery little pieces and black sands. Here's the thing, in with the blondes, down here, as you go up, that's super, super fine black sand. And in amongst it, there's still um, more metal showings. Now, it's floating off, so I'm guessing it's, it's nothing, nothing of worth, but the fact that we're seeing metals all throughout this is quite something. Um, yeah, there's one right here. Hmm. Where'd you go? Yeah, there are micro, micro fine stuff all over, and separating them out is almost impossible. Once you get down to your the last of your blonde sands and a little bit of your black, you might as well just, if you want to hang on to it and see what it is later, um, just stick it in a container, save it up. But that goes to show you, this is off the top of our bucket. It's not on the bottom. This was already well shook up and stirred and everything so that the metals would go down. And even still, we're getting some of it that's so fine mixed in. And one of the things, I've got a neighbor that's doing some, um, hang on. I've got a neighbor that's doing some woodworking over there running a planer. I've got a mechanic living on the other side. Um, another fellow in between and we all make lots of noise around here so it's just one of the things in life that you keep within reasonable times and nobody complains they're good people um, we're going to start our next prospecting on the claims next to the river we're going to work into the old ancient river banks that would be 5, 10, 15 meters higher than the um, surface of the river itself. We had hoped to find that anomaly in the other spot, but that's not working out. It's too far down without machinery. We're never going to be able to find it. And with machinery, there's cost involved that we don't, we can't absorb right now because we're not finding place for gold. So we're going to go down next to the river and we're going to search for more recent gold, float gold coming down. Um, when the rivers were actually up a little higher. And the hope is that we find enough to make it work worthwhile getting some machinery in to process it and make enough that, yeah, we can take an hour or two and we'll go over and check for the anomaly and things like that, do another, another whole um, checking with the ministry. We're allowed to make a hole three meters long, one meter deep, or three meters deep one meter cubic um, <coughs> and we're only allowed to take out one meter of sampling dirt or, or rock so at least I got that down learning what the ministry expects of you and so you don't end up you know overstepping things getting in trouble um, learning their terminology all that stuff it takes effort it's it, there's not so much in this that it's uh, been at it for what, four or five years, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning the rocks in this area and what they're capable of showing me, because it's there's not a lot of visible gold. And to go and go, well, there's none. That, that might not be true. There are areas around my claims where um, they weren't finding very much visible gold, but they were finding enough that a small company could profit and so we're going to go for look for those pay streaks and make uh, 
hope for something that makes it worth running some machinery. So in the meantime, the black sands will be collected and I'll just keep panning out some more. That's about all I can do. Okay, this is the bottom of the sample that we took, the bottom of the bucket. So far, there's really nothing to be found. But I have swished that bucket very well, so if there is anything worth seeing, it should be on the bottom. It should be in this pan. This isn't like panning out a lot of the stuff you'll see people panning online. This is continually gravels right down to super fine sand. I'm no expert panner, but I can promise you you're not going to see anybody quickly pan through the stuff that's in this. All the editing and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, it's got its place. You don't want to bore people. But I personally would have liked to have seen more videos where guys go the full length and they show you the full thing. I've already done four pans, right? And this one I already, like I told you, it's off the bottom of the bucket. It's the very last of it. So... I haven't shown you everything either, because, yeah, that would be massive. You would know? be with me for the last three hours. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but between setup and everything you have to do to get to this point that you're down to the bottom of your tailings, your samples, yeah, you're looking at a lot of time. And after I'm done, I've got to empty these, this tub of water clean up all the other stuff and get ready for hopefully crushing rock, the rock samples that we took. Nothing visible in the rock samples, well nothing golden visible, there's lots of pyrite visible. If you've been with us from the beginning, if you've been you know, going over any of these videos, I'm sorry about the sound quality at times. Um, I noticed while Andy was filming the last one, he had his, he was doing the zoom, and I guess he had a finger over the mic. I'm not even sure where the mic is on this camera, but, um, oh yeah, right up the top, there's a little hole there. So, he puts his finger up there, and we had about five or ten minutes where there was no sound except for the camera zooming in and out. And I've made that mistake before. So you can see this stuff's quite gravelly. All sizes are still in here. You can just wash this off, yeah. You can wash it off the surface. But it could take gold with it. I keep settling it in between. Right? Like, yes, you will wash it off the surface, but you'll wash it off a little bit at a time so you're not pulling any super fine stuff with it. Every time, settle it back down, gives that fine stuff a chance, because that might be all we have in this, right? We were down seven, eight feet. We could have gone another three if we'd had more time, because you can do three, I'm sorry, yeah, three cubic meters. And we were roughly a cubic meter seven to eight feet down, so we could have gone, yeah, another foot, two to three feet, sorry, before we were having to get a permit to do any more exploration, which I don't mind doing, but if we don't need to, I'd rather, uh, even, even with a permit, there was no guarantee, there might have been 40 feet. 50 feet of overburden there, I, and I'm not sure that we can dig that much. 
Right? We can't leave that hole open without closing off the road and the pathway in and stuff, which is not was not easily visible, but we still don't want anybody trouncing in there thinking that they're going to go and look and see what we're doing and somebody gets hurt. So, you don't want to go too deep and 10 feet's plenty. So we're going to start the next one working on the bank by the river. We're going to work into the river rather like a uh, three meter long log going into the river bank about a meter deep, so three feet roughly, three and a third. And we'll try that in a few places along the river once the bugs have died down. And we'll sample through the whole thing because the creek, or the, sorry, the river is there. So we have access to water. We'll bring some up, put it in a tote so we're not polluting the river itself. And that way I can even bring my little rocker box out and run it into a, a tote. And there we pan it and see what we get. Alright, so we're getting there. We're getting to where there's a lot less material. The little pebbles are starting to wash off. There'll still be some right down to the bottom. This is quite a mixture of stuff. It's crazy how much it takes if you don't want to use flower gold. If you want to know if you got it, you've got to be patient. A lot of guys would just go, ah, it's not worth it. Well, it is and it isn't. How much how much flower gold would it equal in a ton if we're only taking out a quarter of a bucket and we find 10 or 15 specks of flower gold? You add that up over a, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a cubic meter of pay dirt. <coughs> It can start to equal out to, you know, a quarter of a gram or something. A quarter of a gram today um, is about 25, 26 bucks. So you go, well, you wish you're going to move. With a machine, you can move a lot. So you could be moving a gram an hour with the, you know, an average small backhoe. And that's uh, 120 ish dollars, if I remember right. <coughs> see that it's on. I can't even remember. I looked at it a little while ago. Gold is worth good. It's got a good price. It's going up again. And it's supposed to go even higher. And if you watch the market too close, you'll see the ups and downs. But if you watch it over the last couple of months, it's really gone up. And it's still climbing. Just because a lot of people bought in a little lower and they sell out and it dips for today and the close of today doesn't mean anything. And the overall gold has been going up since the 1980s for granite and it's easily three times I think what it was worth there or more. If I'd known that when I was younger, I might have invested in it. But I didn't have a clue about such things back then. It went on my radar. I was a kid, a teenager. right down in that crease, so try and keep it there. Just wash the tip away. Try not to get that crease. Just like that. Settle it back down again. to be found at the end of your labor. <coughs> Both my neighbors went quiet. Well, they were gone out. So you 
camera just turned off. It's a good thing it makes a noise or I wouldn't have a clue. I'd be talking to myself. Which I pretty much am, but there's always somebody curious enough to watch this stuff. I know I sure was. what we got left so far. Wash away the edge again. You can already see in here there's, well, you can't see, but I can see there's starting to get very fine black sands mixed in with it. It's fine enough and light enough some of it will wash away. It's not actually uh, pyrate, it's just black sands. And I understand most people say they're the same thing, but there's a lot of stones out there that are darker and a little bit heavier that are not pyrite. And this stuff, you will see a lot of it. And like I can see it mixed in here with the finer sand already. <coughs> so this is Northern Ontario's offerings when you are doing ancient rivers back in the bush, going through go down seven feet, two-thirds of which was river boulders. But think about that. That's insane, man. I have never seen so many rocks and boulders in dirt in Ontario before, and I've dug a lot of trenches and ditches and foundations and all kinds of stuff by hand when I was younger. It used to be a, a favorite job, actually, because I call it bulwark. Put your body to work. By the time you get home, you're tired. But your brain is free to just think about anything. It's, it's not rocket science digging a hole. I find it funny that when I do this, the black sands go to the right trying to equalize it so that they settle to the bottom, but they do, they climb up to the right on me. And that might be something to do with the force of the hand, I guess. And that's on the left. <laughs> Pay attention to it and it moves. But it's, it's very fine blondes with just a little bit of darker ones. Nothing really that I'm going, oh, there might be something here, you know, it's, it's just not that worth it when it's that fine. Tap it all down. And we'll get the heavier stuff up to the surface. Now it fold it down on me. Alright, this time. Let's see anything heavy starts to move up. Little stones, uh, all the pyrites, and the rest of it just slides down. And you can just wash this right out. Because there's nothing in it. And then you're left with this sludge. And if you do it again and again, you get the little bit of blonde sands out of it. still see blonde sands in it. 
bonds right along that line there, but they're moving up with the sludge, they're not, not moving down. See all the fines coming down here, all the blondes right there on the tip. Little bitty stones still. Right, lots of them mixed in. I usually do this right down to where basically all I can see is the is the black if there's not no actual visible gold. Which I haven't seen any visible gold, so I'm not expecting any. stuff that almost when it's dry looks like powder. And there's what we're left with so far. If any of you saw that little white Back showing up, you could go in. Oh, maybe. Oh, something like And that's pretty much it. There's a bit of blonde in there still. Stuff. I find more. More of the microfine blonde than I do with gold, that's for sure. There's still really super fine blonde sands in there. It's so hard to get them out. There we go. A little bit more of it. And let's see what's in the end. Her. If you could <laughs> see gold in there, even magnified it 60 times, I'd be amazed. Because I, I magnified some earlier and did take a look. And to be honest, all it looks like is really tiny microscopic grains of iron pyrite. Little crystals of various things like quartz. There's just nothing showing any signs of visible gold. It's a very disheartening experience, you would think, but it's still.